I don't know whether it's good for Tesla or not. Uh, Betsy could speak to that much better than I can. What I like is that they can do it. That we don't have a bunch of people saying, well, no, we don't want people to be rich. We don't want all sorts of restrictions on executive compensation because decades and decades we've had people saying to get paid too much. Well, this is a great American story. He's rolling the dice. Uh, there's a great chance he gets nothing. But if he performs, he gets a huge payout, and we should applaud that. And I'm, I'm glad that the board can do that and that they have a CEO that's willing to take the same challenge. I think what's interesting about this plan also, Betsy, is that once Elon Musk actually is awarded, if he is awarded once he meets these benchmarks uh, stock, he's got to hold on to that stock for five years. So it's not just let's get that stock up to this market cap, let's get these metrics up here, and then I'm going to just sell that stock. I mean, he's, he's got to be a holder as well. That's true. But he's being paid like a tech company CEO. He's not being paid like an automotive well, what's CEO. What's wrong with that, Betsy? Well, you have to look at the metrics that would be important for someone who was buying a car or buying shares in a car company. Metrics like quality, uh, meeting production requirements, safety. Those are other important metrics that auto companies tend to measure in addition to uh, market cap, profit, and revenue. A fair point. I, I won't dispute that you would want your auto company, obviously, to be building safe vehicles and vehicles that have high quality and the reliability is there. Um, but I would argue that, look, you start cranking out a bunch of clunkers. If you're Tesla five years from now, the stock's not going to be where it's going to uh, where they would like it to be. I mean, but I with think a that's high a value. Point. Go ahead, Betsy. But with a very high value stock, you know, the tendency could be it could be a risk to shareholders that if there was bad news on quality or safety, that you might mitigate that news. You know, uh, compensation plans that are heavily reliant on stock price introduce risk. And I think it's important to account for that. And I think that's why other plans are more balanced and why when you look at picking your peer companies as a compensation chair, you should consider automotive companies, not just tech companies. And this compensation plan is pretty much a pure tech company comp plan. Is your main, I mean, is one of your main objections, Pets, Betsy, that he gets paid on a total amount what is equivalent to a tech company's compensation as opposed to not? I mean, do you think he's just simply being paid too much? I think the equity is way high. He currently has 22%. In this comp plan, he can gain earn another 12%. 22 plus 12, that's an enormous amount. And that's not shareholder friendly. That's a lot of dilution. You know, 1% uh, or a little more per year uh, for a CEO to be able to earn is a huge amount. That's an outlier compensation plan by a lot. David, that's a fair point. I mean, would you be concerned? Yeah, but you know, bigger picture here. Tesla is not disrupting the automobile industry by doing everything the way all the other automobile companies do it. All right. he's, he's bringing something different. He had a completely different way of going about it. He's not even the same as the other electric car company makers. He used the, the cell phone model. You know, he didn't start out saying, well, how can, we make, uh, how can we make cars for economy cars for people? Like they didn't start out saying, how can we make cell phones for the homeless? They started making them for the captains of the universe. And then they got cheaper and the commanders and the lieutenants and the ensigns could buy it. And finally, all the sailors have cell phones. Same thing with it, this car company. They're doing it a completely different way. They, they, and I think it's great. Will it fail? I don't know. But that's what I like about it. Let industries, let firms, let people make decisions. If it works, they'll be copied. If it flunks, they'll try something else. And so I don't think we should hold Tesla and, and Musk to the, the same standards as the automobile companies, or you'll get nothing other than what we already have. Right. I mean, Phil, do you think there's any shot that uh, any other companies that you cover no. could <laughs> no no not, not yeah. none of the traditional automakers will do this yeah. in part because of how the stock holdings are set up and, and the institutional uh, controls that are there there is also no other company that is run by a CEO the way Tesla is no other company now Sergio Marchione you could make an argument has the same level of influence on Fiat Chrysler but it's set up differently from Tesla um, and and he's made it very clear look 
at the end of this year. He's probably going to hand the reins over to somebody else. So, you know, this is singular to both Elon Musk and to Tesla. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Betsy. I mean, part of this, uh, you know, what motivates this compensation plan is a desire to keep Elon Musk as CEO for, for longer than what he had said previously. He had alluded previously that once the Model 3 gets up to scale that he might consider other opportunities. Here we are. We've got a 10-year plan for a company that is so entwined with the cult of the CEO. Isn't that important? For shareholders to make sure that CEO stays in place and is co compensated for that. You certainly want to keep an inspirational CEO, but you also need to have a little balance when you have a charismatic CEO that you are considering all of the other things that could impact your company. Ultimately, they're making a vehicle that should be safe, uh, that they can produce reliably. They've had a lot of production issues. So, you know, if I was looking at a comp plan, I might be looking for metrics on shipping because they haven't been able to fulfill their requirements. So I think it's important to keep an inspirational CEO. I think in, with a disruptive new manufacturer taking a new look at it being software centric, that's all very, very important. And you can see in their comp plan that they, you know, reward their chief technology officer, their VP engineering, whereas traditional auto companies, GM rewards supply chain, uh, Ford rewards their North American uh, operational leaders. But still, you need other metrics, I think, uh, in addition. And I think that not accounting for safety and production in your metrics would be an oversight. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.